Hello you lovely lot. Welcome to another Bad Influence Commentary. We are up to episode number three on series one now. Um, aired on... when did this air? That's a good question. This aired on the 12th of October 1992. Apparently. Hi, this is Bad Influence. In this week's show, our panel reviews Super Alest on the SNES. The time when the and SNES was a king. Way of using a computer to produce ballets. Ooh, ballets. Top work, An Exclusive report on last week's Future Entertainment Show. Psych 2, symbol back over there. Future Entertainment Show. But first, this. Ooh, an Amiga 1200. Is the new Amiga 1200. New! Released wow. next week, it'll set you back a cool £400. Now, I know the Amiga's been around for eight years already, but this new machine is being sold on its fantastic graphics and colours. Apparently, mm. it has up to 17 million different colours available. Whatever that means. Uh, <laughs> well, it means it's got 17 million colours available. It's pretty straightforward, Andy. Have a look at this. Here's the old Zool that we all know and love. Yep. And now to Looking the good. Wow, look at that. Parallax scrolling. Around in the background and moving relative to each other. Yeah. Sims will scroll more smoothly. What's that? Nigel Mansell's Grand Prix. Master. This is a specially written version of Nigel Mansell's yes. World Championship. Yes, a World Championship. And it's so realistic that I'm having a bit of trouble staying on the track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go to that far. Memory and a 32-bit processor. But mercifully, he isn't. However, if you're thinking of upgrading your hardware, beware. One third of existing Amiga software won't run on this machine. Mm. The trouble is, nobody knows which... The Amiga 1200 was, of course, quite well supported. And we witnessed it, it's pretty much its entire life cycle over the Bad Influence series. ...cheeks for you jumped-up joystick jugglers. This is for a game with two names. It's called Legend of Galahad on the Mega Drive and Leander on the Amiga. This well, don't chuck an Amiga over the room, you... Absolutely Neanderthal! It's typing L T U S as a letter. I hope someone caught that. Then you get infinite lives. So uh, I can never die. Eat dirt, Johnny Guardian. <laughs> nice. Never played that game. An everlasting nam. Maybe I will. Thought. Now it's time for this week's game reviews. Our panel have been looking at Super LS on the snares. What do you think of it? It's a really good game. Never played Super LS either. I'll leave you to it. It's a ferociously fast space shoot 'em up. With loads of lethal weapons and power up. Here's Lakesh. Oh, Lakesh, come on. I've got to admit that I don't like Shumuks very much, but Super LS is excellent. It's fast and it really moves along. It does look good. How can you not like shoot em up? Shoot em ups are the staple. You messed up. I love them because they kind of like zone you out into a place of sheer gameplay bliss. And in this game, there's quite a few power ups that are to be collected. Um, they're very lethal, and if you power them up, they make them even more lethal. That's the idea. That's how power-ups work. Which is a good idea. The graphics and the sample voice are make the game more arcadey. And more arcadey. There you go. You heard it here first. This part's kind of easy, and it's on a short game, which is for people who just want a quick blast. I need to do some more Nintendo stuff. I haven't covered a lot of SNES. And good, and it gives the game a good. I do like the SNES. Even though it does not have blast processing. I thought this game would be for shoot 'em up fans only, but I think this I think most people would enjoy this game. It's kind of like an Amiga, isn't it? It's got lots of custom like chips. For money. But a slower CPU. This game, very addictive. And I think the weapon Like an Amiga compared to an Atari. Or a Commodore compared to a Spectrum. A bit like that comparison I did in my Atari ST video. This is a really exciting game, it's fast and you get really absorbed into it. I'd definitely buy it. Yeah. And so the final forty-four pounds ninety-nine. Gave it five out of five. Hefty. And the girls gave it five. If out you of five. accommodate for inflation, we're talking what sixty, seventy quid for a game back then. So Some games came out at about sixty quid, didn't they, or seventy quid? Sh shocking one prices. Does one star mean <laughs> turkey. But remember, our panel is made up of people who actually buy the game. But I like turkeys. They're nice. Completely different. Friendly little creatures. Bit of ballet. Oh, this doesn't really fall in line with the bad influence title, does it? This isn't influencing me in a bad way at all. Well, I kind of is, I suppose, but not in like a 
seedy bad way. That dance was unusual. Then again, it's a children's show. Why would it be seedy? Computer system called Lifeform. It's not what it's about at all, is it? Choreographer Mark Baldwin. Hello, Mark. Look at that base unit. That is a brick and a half, isn't it? That's like a breeze block. Here we have a dancer, and I can get the dancer to move yeah, they mate. whatever fashion I want. He moves just like a human would. That looks, All the joints that looks bloody painful, if you ask me. Here's the left thigh moving from the hip socket. Can it do anything humanly possible? Oh, yeah, yes. Anything humanly possible, and a lot more, so I have to be careful. Right thigh, yeah, I move that thigh. I like his move. denim jacket. Oh, he, he's not even standing on the ground. Jump like that and sort of stay like that forever. Let me see what he's doing here. This is the pelvis. See, he's absolutely left. It is impossible. That is not possible to do in real life. It's like some sort of fantastical break dancing. And, um, I can also make pathways for the dog. It's like a dog. Is that a dog? Shift around, or I can make him. We've got a break dancing dog. A bat would like to see. I can jump in the air. But no one could oh jump that high. No one could jump that high or in that shape. But as a choreographer, I would actually have someone come along and lift them. So it's up to me to interpret this material that I'm making up on the machine. So you have to use your common sense. Yeah, you've got to use your common sense. What's this? This is the timeline of watching a movie. These are all the frames of the movie. In the first frame, if I've got the dancer doing this, and then if I move along to frame five and find another... I wonder if this like stuff really... I mean, this kind of appealed to me when I was watching Bad Influence because it's done on a computer and it was these revolutionary packages that could do all these things. Then you say five seconds later it'll be in another position yeah. and the computer fills it in for you. Yeah. Thank so God. can I see a <laughs> phrase from the uh, dance? Yeah, sure. I, I don't know if it inspired anyone to take up ballet. Because I'm quite new to it, but... Um, and. If you're doing a um, maybe that is quite small, computerized ballet, so long, but if you're doing broad gestures, you can do it quite. Whoa, that is a neck snapping it's move, right? It's like a visual tool. Can I see Christine doing that? Yeah, Christine knows this phrase. So, would Christine have worked out this movement from seeing it back on the computer? Well, I learned it from the computer and then I showed it to Christine, and she's doing her own interpretation of what it is. <laughs> so, she's not doing it. Anything like a computer did at all. Well, the advantage is that I don't have to hire a studio and dancers, and I can choreograph at 10.30 at night, and I don't need loads of space to do it. Has the system been used much? Yeah, the system's been used for about three and a half years by an American choreographer called Merce Cunningham. Um, and in fact, he's done a piece for Rombe Dance Company called Touch Bass. Well, thanks for showing us that. Thank you. And Touch Bass is being performed by the Rombe Dance Company, who are currently on tour, and dates and details are in the data blast. Wow, awesome. Thanks, Violet. That bloke just went wrong, didn't he? He looked like he did. Amazing what you can do with computers, isn't it? Dancing on the screen. What a load of scrotty rubbish. <laughs> That's from the software called Street Fighter 2. <laughs> anyway. This is a cheat for battle toads on the NES. When the title screen appears, hold down A, B and down, then press start. This is a totally awesome cheat. Oh, nice pun. Nice pun now. When you start the game, you start with five toads instead of three. Wow. What do you think about that, then, slimy? Good, isn't it? Oh, he's got a little frog. All of Nam's hints. My cat's been eating frogs recently. Rather yeah, disturbing, really. To access it, you should know the drill by now, but I'll show they you. They squeal one really loudly. Video, I've been trying to save the them, but. And then rewind them. To no avail. Back to yourself. But don't play them back at full speed. Use the pause and the frame advance or the jog button, whatever it's called on your video, and you should be able to scroll through up to 50 different pages of information completely free, gratis, and for nothing. Last week saw the biggest games event of the year, the Future Show at Earl's Court in London. Did anyone go to the Future Show? Don't worry, I was, and I took a Bad Influence film crew with me. Did anyone get a autograph from Andy and Violet? If the games are where it's at for you, then this is definitely the place to be. There have been... Okay, that's an ocean. Have Ocean got a, um... Four days. In fact... One of those massive slides. Helter Skelters. Awesome. Closed the doors and that nearly caused a riot. So what's the big attraction? That is, see at the bottom. This is where it was at in the 90s. Future gaming shows. Super scope. Oh, do you remember those Sega lock on guns? Like, they're like Quasar for the home. Dual reality. This is where I look at my most attractive. Right, there's a uh, Vive unit there. 40,000 pounds. Yeah. Migraine induced. Look at the size of that thing. Sorry, I shot somebody. That's when we all thought virtual reality was going to take off, didn't we? And, the world. and then we tried it. And we were so disgusted it made us sick. Hand, and then you got to shoot this dude in a white t-shirt. Because the 
weird thing is, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Because you can't see anything. No, no, we don't, Andy. Do you remember that virtual reality show with Craig Charles, which was on? It was on after Bad Influence, I think. That was an interesting specimen of a show. Sonic 2, stand over there. This is Road Rash 2, the winner of the Road Rash 2, good champion. game. Hello, Sonic. Sonic 2, the first chance. Of course, uh, Sega bringing out a new Sonic platformer, which looks like it looks pretty good. It looks like it's in the style of the original Sonics. High expectations for that. Give me five, Sonic. Sure, Sonic doesn't do high fives, mate. Uh, right. It's all very formal. Bizarre, quite bizarre. For me, it was time to attend the big event. For the last few weeks, thousands of people all over Great Britain have been battling for the title National Computer Games Champion and the top prize of £10,000. £10,000. Now down to the last two. That is something worth competing for. Brett from Nottingham and Tony Eaton from Stafford. Gentlemen, can I ask you first... Has he got, has he got a mega... Make a CD magazine. Uh, but that four hours a day sometimes... Why is he holding it in front of him like he's like a shield? Recently doing about five hours a day. You play loads of games, what's your favourite? PGA Tour Golf on the Mega Drive. That's your favourite? Street Fighter 2 on the Super NES. And if you That's were a bit to better. want £10,000, what would you do with the money? Put it in the bank and get the interest. Very wise, and yourself? Uh, get a season ticket to the Wolves first and then a Mega CD. Three, yeah. two, one! Oh, you play golf. Oh, I'm the lads have to play three rounds. The first game is Lemmings 2. This is the first time anybody's seen the game. Wow. First time anyone's seen Lemmings 2. Not as good as the first game, but... Still, a good effort from DMA Design. I mean, how can you improve on perfection? You can add features, but... Adding features onto perfection just perf detracts from perfection. Street Fighter 2. Taking away a check for ten thousand pounds. It's quite a hefty prize, isn't it? World Computer Games Championship 1992. Give a round of applause to Alan. Alan, nice one, my son. Ten grand. Chaos has just overtaken. I wonder if he's still accruing interest on his ten thousand pounds in the bank. Isn't that Hacksaw Jim Duggan, or whatever his name is? Yes. WWF, a new game on the snap. Back before it was WWE. Andy Crusher Crane there. Since the show, we've had some bad news and some good news about Lemmings 2. Oh God. The bad news is that it's slipped. It won't be available until February. Oh God. But the good news is it will have an exclusive sneak preview on Bad Influence next week. Yeah. But now for some more games reviews. First up is my Ah, Micro Machines Plug Through Cartridge. Which means you've got to plug another game. Actually looked really good on the NES, didn't it? It looked very comparable to the Mega Drive version. Getting it out, a nightmare. Yeah, that must have caused havoc to the slot on the NES. It's an overhead race game based on the Micro Is this the one where Violet? You can choose to be one of 12 characters each. Uh, became one of the characters, or was that Micro Machines 2? Morgan, who's playing Super Cool Spider, and Robin, who's playing Dwayne the Unpredictable. She got digitised into one of them. I think it was the second game. This is a really interesting. Both really good games are. I love micro machines. This in the house. Two player I'm games were amazing. The I'm I'm a really um, erratic genius, and occasionally I get these brilliant bursts of speed. I'm just so super cool. I'll take this game with no problems. It holds no horrors for me at all. Both a bit shit. I'm just in there. Here we I love it how you could uh, drive over like pool tables and kitchen worktops and. Just through real life rooms and situations. So unique at the time. On this level, we're in tanks and we're fighting. It looked good, didn't it? I mean, look at that. We've got matchboxes, we've got little army figures. They all look good, even on this 8 bit hardware. The NES wasn't great, it didn't have a lot of colours to use, but. You'll not get away, though. It works well. Perfect shot coming up. Ah, got you. Nah, that's cheating, that was. Not really. This was quite an average game. And that, that reminds me of Trans Am on the Spectrum. The earlier levels are far too hard. And again, another top down races are the spice of life. It's not recommended. It's an unusual game. It's quite good, but I wouldn't want to play it over and over again. What? What's wrong with you? It's fucking fantastic. It's a good idea, but it gets boring very quickly. No, it doesn't. You're talking about Lakesh. And the scores for Micro Machines. The boys gave it an average score, three out of five. And the girls also no, you guys don't know what you're talking about. 
That's five, four at least. Next is Nigel Mansell's World Championship on the Amiga. It's a strange irony that this game should be released just as Nigel bows out of Formula One racing altogether. It's also a timing, perhaps. His strange game. Back when games were 2D, it was all. This game, it's really good. The graphics are, a really, bit weird. are really brilliant. You can see the hands moving. It's like being in a real racing car. This is England now, and as usual... Yeah, this really game was nowhere near as good as Ed and Senna's uh, Monaco Grand Prix. Have wet, soft, or hard. I played it on the Amiga. I had it on the CD32 before I got rid of it. I like the tight corners. It's just those corners. Look, the cars take up so much room on the corners. It's just hard. It's, it's just hard to get round anyone. I mean, look. Look how big the road is is in comparison to the car in front. Pages to load. If you haven't already bought a racing sim, this is a good one to get. I'd recommend this to my dad, and he's quite fussy about his games. Mansell is a build up, but don't believe the hype. There's don't believe the hype. It's already out, and this is not the best of the bunch. Just don't waste your money on it. Uh, you're right, Lakesh. You're right. In my opinion, this one's pretty boring. Yeah, you're right. There's not much to recommend, Nigel Mansell. The graphic. No, well, don't get personal. We're not talking about the man himself. Room on the road to overtake. And the scores for Nigel Mansell's World Championship. The boys gave it a poor two out of five, but the girls liked Whoa, it. Whoa, look at the difference. That was that younger girl, wasn't it? She absolutely loved it. She upped the score. They must probably take the scores off two. Right, keyboard creeps. Throw she probably gave it five. The other one probably gave it colours and pay uh, attention. three. On the title Averages out of four. Island on the Game Boy, press up, down, up, down, shake it all about. Huh. No, sorry. Right. Nam Rude, of course. Right, um, he was in Emmerdale, wasn't he, for a bit? Is he still in Emmerdale? Does anyone watch Emmerdale? Does Emmerdale even exist as a show anymore? Adventure, Andy. Not with you, thanks. I was sitting in the Bad Influence office the other week. So mean to Nam. This computer disc landed on my desk. I stuffed it into my machine. Sneakers. And this is what came out. A high-tech way of getting publicity for a new film called... Not yeah. Sneakers. I haven't seen Sneakers. I had to enter the password CTEC Astronomy. But I don't know the password. I remember there used to be like lots of uh, cover disc CDs and stuff based around films. Just denied. Try the character dossier. That was quite a um, a big way of promoting content. There was always these of the actors in the film. Crappy multimedia programs. Robert Redford, and if you go through, you can have everything you ever wanted to know about Sydney Poitier. Fascinating. The film is released tomorrow. It's about a group of high-tech hackers, the Sneakers, who are hired to test security systems. In this clip, they're trying to get government protection without giving away their hideout. I'm going to bounce this call through nine different relay stations throughout... I love hacking films. They are so badly rooted in technology. Any time hacking is used in a film... The voice of the person on the other end of the line. Not as accurate as a polygraph, but for today's purpose... It's just... funny. It's my dime. I'll ask the questions. Who are you? Say my name is... Mr. Say my name, baby. Drew. They made the second leg. Mr. Abbott. Are you interested in Sea Tech astronomy? I'm interested in all kinds. There's always a <laughs> the graphical representation in hacking is always a. I mean, it has to be to work on a film, doesn't it? You can't just have like lines of text. If I come in with what I know, can you but there's always like a map depicting where the hacking is. A, there we go, occurring and how far it's getting. My safety. Where is the item? Can you guarantee my safety? Five seconds. Set. Yes, I can guarantee your safety. That Morpheus. This is lying. James L. Jr. Hang up, they've almost got us. James L. Jones. Flying! Hang up, fish! He's flying, he's flying! Hang up! Oh, so close. Exciting stuff, eh? Now, I know the password for the next level is an anagram of SeaTech Astronomy, but I'm not very good at anagrams. Let me see. Scary motto scene? Scary. Last week's competition prize was four of these supervisions. Supervision! Look at that! We asked you the names of the two droids in Star Wars, and the answer was, of course, C-3PO and R2-D2. This week's competition prize is a Game Gear with TV. Whoa, with a massive analog aerial that could take what someone's eye out. The name of the cowboy. Take someone's cowboy face off. Played by Robert Redford in a movie. Sorry, necessary motto. I'm sure it's necessary motto. Answers on a postcard. The Bad Influence magazine, which there was only two um, issues of before it was canned. To get the Bad Influence magazine is in the shops from Saturday. It is necessary motto. Saturday morning, 9:25. What's up, Doc? Son, grateful for your company for that. Failing that, back here for Bad Influence next week. Ta-ra. See ya. Toodle. Here's the Data Blast. Um, you can watch the Data Blast on YouTube. There's a, uh, an add-on for Chrome which will allow you to skip, frame skip through the video. I'll put the link down for it down below. Anyway, um, thanks for joining me on this 
episode of Bad Influence. See you next time. Thanks for watching.